startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome to our May 2023 wrap up uh, with this month in German, Swiss, and Austrian startups. We, as always, will bring you the important news from the startup scenes in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland in 30 minutes or less, which today will be uh, quite a task on our hands because we have a full program. Um, as always, we will follow our top-down structure in the news. First, the top news. Then we look with a bird's eye view at the startup ecosystem in German language countries. We dig deeper, looking at interesting startup cities, and we will end with general news. For those of you who are really serious about startups, there's a collection called Stay Ahead of the Curve, where we share interesting reads, articles, studies, and podcasts, um, not only related to Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, but to everything, um, to like a global level. Welcome to our uh, wrap up with me this time, the host Chris traveling, which also explains this like little hostage like situation in the back and my travel vacation shirt. I'm actually in my childhood bedroom and um, with you, Joe from Frankfurt. Hi. Hey. hey guys. But Chris, I do remember we did this uh, once before where we've also recorded one news with you from your childhood bedroom, right? Exactly. Yes. Oh, that was probably then the childhood living room. We will see. We will, we go through the whole apartment here. Um, we recorded this news episode on May 31st, 2023. All news not yet included will be published in our next news episodes. And as always, you can find all links that we quote to, um, or about all the news that we are talking to in our, talking about in our medium blog. Um, the link is in your show notes. Our next news will be published on June 29th. And then we are, for the news, in our summer break. So let's start off with our highlight section because, well, more a low light than a highlight is the fact that Germany is now officially in a recession, but one with barely any unemployment. We will talk about what that means. Also, we still track many startups going out of business, but the overall picture is getting better. The German VC and PE barometer, which captures the mood of German investors, is showing an uptick already. This shows especially in the massive amount of new funds that were raised. They are promising a bright future for startups in Germany. Uh, we tracked at least 3.4 billion euros of newly raised funds, which will be invested completely or partially in startups in Europe and GSA, Germany, Switzerland, Austria. Um, have a look at our Medium blog. There we have more information about what the investors are looking for and how to pitch to them. We also have investments and exits worth at least 5.4 billion euros and news in this episode, including WeFox, Tier Mobility, Infarm, Blinkist, Bitpanda, Aleph Alpha, Sono Motors, and many more. But before we get into it uh, and into the top news, you have a little word about our enablers. Of course, this recording is supported by HTA, Hessen Trade and Invest, and the Enterprise Europe Network Hessen. Um, These organizations have made tremendous contribution to helping startup businesses succeed and thrive, providing a range of services from helping to fight grants to ongoing partnerships. By taking advantage of these resources, startup companies can network and develop innovative strategies for success on the international stage. The dedicated support of Hessen Trade Invest and the Enterprise Europe Network Hessen is paramount in providing startup businesses with tools for lasting success. Look for our dedicated sub podcast in partnership with them called Tech Startups Germany, of course, to be found on our link tree and startupraven.com, the best way to identify investors and corporation partners for early stage startups. Sign up for early access right now and you may be the 11th to do so. Chris, you top news guy. <laughs> yes, and our first top news is related to a topic we've been talking about quite often here, um, and that is the grocery and delivery startup or grocery delivery startup landscape in Germany. Um, as always, a little reminder, Germany is really price sensitive when it comes to grocery. So in my, from my point of view, this has always been quite a risky bet. And we see right now that the market is clearing up 
because our question or the question that we are wondering about is is there a deal or no deal because Getier is in talks to take over the German grocery app rival Flink writes the Financial Times but then the sale to Getier fell through now Flink is raising 150 million euros from investors including grocery giant Rewe so like a huge German chain and DoorDash um Tier Mobility is going to merge with a competitor. Uh, Tier Mobility is an e-scooter e giant and they map a route to their merger. Um, question also here being how big of a market can those scooters be in European cities? I guess we are a bit like past the hype cycle now, but probably there is some um yeah saturation of the market or probably even the market might be now on a level that might make room for some of the startups to work we are wondering whether infarm will soon be out farm because infarm keeps shrinking and is leaving europe as is reported by handelsblatt in germany the greenhouse startup reportedly has only 80 employees left in europe and will get an investment and an unknown valuation for their relocation likely the middle east with low energy prices blinkist makes a large exit probably you've seen their ad somewhere online um it's a berlin-based startup that helps you understand non-fiction books by writing short wrap-ups of them as text or in audio form um, they are being sold to the australian education startup go one for an undisclosed amount reportedly to be or reportedly hundreds of millions of euros We have large drops in valuation, which are not only for the small companies. Bitpanda, the Bitpanda boss, <laughs> Bitpanda boss admits his company may now, uh, be worth only 2.5 to 3 billion US dollars versus the 4.1 billion US dollars, um, valuation they had at their August 2022 funding. And Germany will get another Giga factory, but not from Tesla this time around. Tesla having built one in close to Berlin, but now Swedish unicorn Northwald builds a Giga factory in the north of Germany um, for 4.5 billion euros, they say. Thanks in large part, as is always the case, I guess, in these markets to subsidies. Um, the Heidelberg-based AI startup Aleph Alpha is seen as a promising competitor of ChatGPT, and that's why big names line up to invest. For example, the SAP CEO indirectly confirms their investment in the uh, AI startup, rumored to be up to 1 million euros. Uh, related news that later emerged, we reported that SAP wants to invest uh, to now Intel also shows interest to invest like intel We the chip company yeah yeah not as in intelligence gathered by the cia and um we fox close uh, closed large funding they raised 110 million dollars in debt and equity funding in order to become profit profitable um they uh, had secured that funding at a 4.5 billion US dollars valuation and is now aiming for profitability. Um, the company sells insurance products through in-house and external insurance brokers. And then we have Sono Motors, which had to file for bankruptcy, um, which seems like the end of a dream for now in a way, because Sono Motors wanted to bring the Cyan to the market, a solar roof charging car uh, they raised several crowdfunding rounds and got external investors then they had to return to crowdfunding in 2019 they eventually made a nasdaq listing in 21 but they could not finish the development of the car with the money at hand even the down payments of many enthusiasts after ending their solar car project now sono motors has to file for insolvency housekeeping and time to brag right housekeeping and time. it's like a tough transition from here <laughs> but yeah yeah it only gets better events today we want to hint at two events look at our medium blog for discounts uh tech open air july 5th to 7th in berlin and a kind of competing event with our uh, partner deep startup ecosystems the deep startup ecosystem conference this year in budapest hungary from 6th uh, from 5th 
to 6th of July um, with our partner and with this link you have here in our show notes, you get 20% off. On our publication schedule during July and August, we will have entrepreneur interviews and entrepreneur tools for you, but only published every other week, so twice a month. You can expect our summer wrap up to be published on Monday, September 4th as a, as a Labor Day special. From then on, we are back to a normal weekly publication schedule until Christmas, maybe even twice a week. We have a lot of content coming up and our internet radio station. We just posted a few days ago that we surpassed 60,000 listeners per 30 days in our internet radio station startup dot radio. Now we are happy to announce that we surpassed even 70,000 listeners there. Thank you to our audience. Let us know what we can do better. Chris, you look like an ecosystem guy today as well. Yeah, ecosystem. Yeah, whole ecosystem on the shirt. Um, yeah, at first, let's have a look at relevant news from the from within the European Union because a new EU payment system called the European Payment Payments Initiative, EPI, is about to start in 2024. Um, their goal is to build a European competitor to PayPal, Visa, and MasterCard. We also saw the Invest in Europe report um, saying that re record fundraising in 2022 as long-term investors step up support for European private equity and venture capital. Um, let's now zoom in and focus a bit more on Germany. I said it already in the beginning, Germany is in a recession, or well, technically, because that means uh, two consecutive quarters of negative growth, which is always a nice <laughs> uh, euphemism for shrinking. Um, but what is different this time around than in other recessions is that there are uh, very different circumstances. For example, this time Germany has an um, unemployment rate of just 5.7% compared to 6.9% during the last recession in 12 and 13. And what makes it different also for many startups is that it is the first recession ever <laughs> for many of them and for their investors. Plus, of course, we see rising inflation, interest rates, the uh, invasion in Ukraine. And uh, you will see later in the news that we still have insolvencies, but also a hell of a lot of new funds being raised to invest in the hopefully soon to come uptick. Um, we also found a statistic saying that on average, a recession lasted one to eight quarters since 1945 with an average duration of 4.8 quarters. So we will see how long this, lo uh, how long this one is going to take. So, because even though there is now a silver lining on the horizon, we are not out of the woods yet. Another huge topic in Germany right now is, as in many other countries, is uh, about the legalization of cannabis. And um, Germany, uh, Germany's path is that they are first going to legalize it through so-called cannabis clubs. Um, there was an announcement that, I mean, cannabis clubs basically meaning it's public places where you can smoke weed. Um, after uh, this plan was made public in April, the existing number of clubs in Germany got a massive wave of applications to join. Um, and also there are estimates that the la partial legalization of cannabis could bring in 1 billion euros in additional tax revenues and savings for Germany, as is estimated by economist Justus Haukup. Um, the government estimates a legal market for 400 tons per year. Most money uh, would come from savings and less work poli for police and courts plus additional tax revenues, payroll taxes, social security payments from the newly generated jobs. Also, this is not the big solution kind of as startups have been hoping for, like an interview that we did showed last year. You can find more about that in the show notes and archives. We also see that the German VC and pre-E business climate indicator of KFWU Research, Kreditanstalt für Wiederaufbau, um, said uh, called the PE barometer shows signs of recovery for Q1 in 23. We have a link to the PDF in the show notes and you can learn more about the index also in our interview with KFW's chief economist. And Rise Europe um European startup ecosystem builders join forces. Um you can learn more about Unternehmer Tum from Munich. 
um, from the technical university there, one of the initiators in our interview where they already announced their intentions more than half a year ahead of other news outlets was when we had this tiny bit of news. U.S. pensioners uh, benefit most from German startup successes. German pensioners go largely empty-handed, as was written by redstone.vc based on their own study. Um, to give you a bit of background, the U.S. pension funds profiting are the ones who give money to the VCs investing in German startups as so-called limited partners or LPs. So they also get a large share of the profit when they are realized. U.S. pension funds make up Uh, 27% of US-based VCs and 15% of German-based VCs. In total, US-based, US pension funds hold about 10% of German startups indirectly via those VC funds, writes redstone.vc. Quite an interesting bit of information, I'd say. And we will now move on to hubs and um, different parts of Germany and cities where startup action is happening. Yes, the hops. As always, we try to highlight hidden gems. My home turf, Frankfurt, are in my area. Two of our former guests receive funding. AIC Accelerator Program gives millions to energy robotics. You can learn more in the press release and, of course, in our interview. Wingcopter, Germany's drone delivery startup, raises 44 million US dollars from EIB. And of course, you can learn more in our interview with the CEO there. Um, and one more is aiming for a billion euros in revenues. Emma Sleep is aiming for one billion euro annual revenue for 2023. They said in an interview, you can learn more about the company and its founder, of course, in our interview. Our Frankfurt Rhine My News, Wunderkraft, a Miami, Florida and Frankfurt based provider of software solutions for APIs closes 3 million US dollar funding round. And we talked in our news about the DWS investment in crypto company Tradias. Tradias. Now DWS calls the deal off. Startup Railflow closes financing route of 3.6 million euros. Scammers duplicated the website of fintech app FinanzGuru where the difference was just one dash that was added instead of FinanzGuru.de, one word, finance-guru uh, was the scam website. Um, fortunately, the scam page is down by now, so always be careful. Cologne based, a uh, Cologne, Cologne based Sastrify, a tool to purchase and manage SaaS subscription, raises 32 million US dollars in Series B funding. And Oki is a Cologne based online cheese store, has to file for insolvency. Hamburg, Hamburg based green startup, traceless materials, receive 5 million euro government funding. And of course, you can learn more about the found the founding late uh, one of the founders a lady here in our show notes passau also a nice city in bavaria uh katja's green food the vc arm of katja's also owning vix cough sweets ahoy Brause and salos brands invests in my muesli chris you want to take over austria i want to but i also before that want to explain the okese joke because it's so hard to understand for people not uh, uh, having Germany as their like mother tongue or street German, I would say, because Okese is also something that people would say instead of Okeli Dokeli. And Käse is also the German word for cheese. So it's a really weird wordplay that they had there. Anyway, let's move on to Austria, where we see that Vienna-based startup Talentier, which allows to convert YouTube videos into tradable assets, um, raised a million euro funding round with lead investor Bitpanda CEO Eric Demuth. Austria-based ATNS received 250 million euro as a loan from EIB to secure Europe's microchip supply. Then Austrian tutoring unicorn Go Student is now profitable in its core business, according to its founder. He says they will show a profit overall at the end of the year. Pre-wave. Uh, Vienna, Austria-based provider of an AI-first solution for supply chain risk management, raised 18 million euros in a Series A fund, A-plus funding. 
Vienna-based Schrankel, a company offering an alternative to canteens, raised 1 million euro in additional venture capital. And Sign D, also a Vienna-based KIC and KIB, Rectech has to solve for insolvency. Um, KIC, KYB, for those who don't know, know your client and know your business customers, uh, regulations against money laundering and terrorism financing that all financial services, services entities have to follow to one degree or another. Moving westwards to Switzerland. Um, oh, I'm very sorry. Um, the, there we see a big exit because Ripple acquires the Swiss based Metaco for, um, 250 million US dollars. The Switzerland based robotics company Anybotics has raised 50 million dollars in a Series B funding round led by Walden Catalyst and NGP Capital. Um, Eco Robotics, a, uh, Yverdon Le Bain, Switzerland based manufacturer of ARA, an AI powered plant by plant recognition and precision spraying system, raised 52 million dollars in funding. ARA here is the brand name of their solution for precision distribution of herbicide agents and similar products. Startup Care raises 6 million Swiss francs in seed funding and starts a US expansion. Care is a startup for evidence-based prevention medicine. You can think biohacking. Um, and that completes the hubs section. I feel as if I have to uh, explain the phone ringing. That was the New York Blood Center at telling, reminding me that I should donate blood. I'm very sorry for the interruption. And um, moving on to general news, tech news, and company news in our next section. Um, little side note here, our aim is to inform you on the on the startup world in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, small and medium-sized enterprises and large enterprises are also active in the markets. Therefore, we include some news of them here as well, where we believe uh, they have an impact on our relevant segment of the GSA economy. First off, as we did in a couple of, as we have been doing a couple of months now already, let's have a look at new VC funds for those of you looking for money. Um, we have in our show notes more information and where on where and how to pitch those investors. Um, you can find that on medium.com slash startup raid dash IO, startup red dash IO, medium.com slash startup red dash IO. Um, there um, we include all funds that we find. Um, you can always mail or comment us if you find more um, that are not excluding investing in GSA startups one way or another. Um, Actually, right now, it is definitely billions of money you can get through those VCs. Um, We're not going into detail here, Chris, right? Because we have 11 funds that are investing. Exactly. And so some of them even have billions on their own to give away. For example, one equity partners, they have a $1 billion continuation fund or Mayfield, which raised $955 million across two new funds. And there's many, many others. Um, and um, with this just being mentioned, I think let's move on to some fintech news. Oh, there was one piece related to VC funds here. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, because um, <laughs> if we have a look, is uh, uh, sorry, if you see that how many funds are being raised, well, you can already guess, I think, that they are not all performing well. New news around the funds of the prominent investor in Germany, Klaus Hom Hommels, emerged. There, his a piece of uh, the European VC Lakestar are unhappy. The founder, Hommels, was hyped, but now it turned out that his funds, Lakestar 1 and Lakestar 2, are currently just showing 10 to 16% returns versus 46% long-term average, it, according to a 2022 study. But Hommels has been in the GSA news quite frequently, and we also had news about him and his funds. He seemed like an authority, but simply can not always win. <laughs> and so, yeah, we um, thanks for the reminder. We wanted to um, have this little um, follow-up here on our uh, former coverage. Now, FinTech News. Exactly. Fintech, my home turf. Fintech Solaris is fundraising 50 to 60 million from investors with they call a stable valuation. They have been valued at 1.6 billion euros during their last fundraising last summer. 
JP Morgan is right now in Germany only a bit smaller than Germany's second largest listed bank, Commerzbank, by total asset, only being active in B2B business, but wants to bring the B2C case of Chase offering for retail clients to Germany until summer 2025. Suspicious deals here. Buffin investigates SDAX listed online broker Flatex Digiro and the share transaction of its CEO. Corporate credit card startup Moss was once valued at 500 million US dollars. Investors include Peter Thiel and had employed 500 employees. They seem to keep shrinking and shedding headcount according to a German block, which could only find 380 current employees. Chris, you have more general news? More general news very quickly. Let's, it's going to be a wild ride. Uh, the founders of uh, Gorillas, the quick delivery startup that we have, have been talking about quite often on this podcast, are starting a clone of the health, da health data app Aware. Uh, interestingly enough, in there, the super angel Christophe Mer uh, invests in the clone, but he's also an investor in Aware itself. Bosch, German car uh, supplier, is going to acquire TSI semiconductors in order to boost the US chip production. Deutsche Börse, uh, German stock exchange, offers $4.3 billion for Denmark's Simcorp. The Inc. banking app in Germany, Inc. being like a German bank, <laughs> um, got a significant overhaul. ING, they're Dutch. Oh, they're Dutch. Okay, sorry. Uh, got a significant overhaul, which did not improve the user experience. We found a recent blog post that collected social media posts from angry customers. Um, as always, now there's the topic of AI. We see that Google's chatbot Bard is coming to Europe, um, as was announced, but then Google pulled back. The likely background there is the upcoming AI regulation in the EU environment. Um, we which also feels as if we always have this now, have a bit of information about a German member of parliament named Philip Amtor of the Conservative Party. He was in trouble for lobbying for the New York-based company August Intelligence. Now the company filed for insolvency and the administrator wants to claw back money that Mr. Amtor received. We already talked about Timeless in our news, a startup that enabled small investors to own a share of expensive wrist watches for more than 100,000. Um, a robbery of the main safe there ended the company. Now the police has the, had the first suspect arrested. The German crowdfunding platform Seedmatch lost a court ruling and has to pay compensation to their client. The problem is the contract clause in question that led to the compensation is part of thousands of other contracts as well. So there's going to be a pretty lengthy um, reconciliation, I guess. And then Luxo, the Berlin-based startup, uh, sorry, the Berlin-based blockchain project starts its main net for social media, virtual clothing, and NFTs. Talking about creative destruction. Yes, Schumpeter's Kreative Zerstörung, Creative Destruction still ongoing. Berlin-based car-sharing company Clever Shuttle has to file for insolvency, reports Berlin-based Tagesspiegel. Startup Food Waters recorded a pitch in the German version of Shark Tank, Die Höhle der Löwen, and found one investor. Unfortunately, it had to file for insolvency before the episode went on air and is in liquidation, meaning no hope of getting back there. Berlin-based HR tech startup Expert Lead has to file for insolvency in, as well. And keep in mind the news from Okese and Sign D. Um, that we mentioned before. Um, Chris, you are the person who always ends on a high note, right? Let's end on a high note, or in this case, a couple of high notes. Looking at our 30 minute mark, I'm going to be, uh, fast because also, and also keep in mind that this is a tiny selection. Um, the news here is just supposed to show you how resilient the overall startup scene is right now. Popcore, a Berlin-based gaming studio, was sold in November 22. Now in an SAC filing, a block found the purchase price of 1 
199.2 million US dollars for 61.5% of the company. We have Patient 21, a Berlin based Digi physical health tech company, raised 100 million euros in a Series C funding. Duolix raised 40 million euros to progress track therapies for autoimmune diseases into the clinic via ITGF. Berlin based startup Spread raised 14.6 million euros to become the source of truth for complex physical products. And we have a couple of more in the show notes. As always, we also have news for you to stay ahead of the curve. And, um, One of them, for example, being how business leaders should think about the metaverse in 2023. And now I think we might end up with like two seconds after 30 minutes. But I say goodbye from my hometown in Witzenhausen, Germany. Goodbye from Frankfurt. Have a great day. See you in in July, end of June. Bye-bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at W www.startuprad.io Remember, sharing is caring.